Hey, Kayla, thank you so much for joining me here on the podcast. I am so excited to have you sit down with us. Of course, I'm excited to chat today. We, a little backstory, I I have a ton of people from um, Ultimate Product Party here because I was so inspired by listening to so many people. And, you know, our audience is, majority of it is retailers. And I think that retailers spend so much time in their stores, they don't really have a chance to get out much. So what I've understood is that everyone is loving how much they are learning off this, just from bringing out people either about their own businesses, as well as, you know, introducing them to people like open to buy and for you graphic design and branding, which we haven't had on yet, which is perfect timing. Yes. I'm so excited. And I agree. A lot of people when they're doing their retail store, that is their day in and day out. I think that's really true for any business owner. Um, So sometimes it's hard to have that inspiration start flowing because you're so stuck in the day to day. So hopefully I can get some wheels turning today. Well, I think, you know, I think what happens is you have a clear idea of what your store's identity is, but you don't always have a clear idea of what your branding is going to be. And, and ideally, yes, they tie together. I mean, this most seamless retailers, their branding and their store are cohesive and they mesh perfectly. But I think a lot of people do like what you had mentioned at Ultra Product Party was they get the, um, the app and then they start designing it themselves and it looks fine and we're going to leave it. And they totally yeah. forget about having somebody else do it. Yes, definitely. I see that so many times, especially when people are just starting out, they'll like jump in Canva quickly, throw a logo together and some colors and be like, good enough. Um, And especially when you have a physical space, they quickly start to see how that is not going to work when they have to do signage or window clings or marketing material. They quickly realize that just having those couple of colors and logos just really isn't going to cut it. And that really isn't the brand. So tell everyone about yourself and how a little bit of how you started and tell us about your um, agency Docs Design. Yeah. So as mentioned, my name is Kayla. Um, I'm the owner of Docs Design. We are a remote creative studio of illustrators and brand experts. Um, I started Docs Design about five years ago. I was working at one of the top design agencies in the Midwest, working for big names like Target and Georgia Pacific, and always thought that was what I wanted to do and quickly realized how uninspired I was in that office setting. Um, I had three little dachshunds at the time and leaving them every single day to go to work really crushed my soul. So (laughs) I was like, you know what, I'm going to give a go and try to, you know, freelance on my own. Um, And that's where the name Docs Design came from, is from my dogs. Um, So I started kind of realizing that there was really a gap in the marketplace for um, maybe not the targets of the world, the smaller retailers, the smaller product companies. And there really wasn't someone that was giving them the level of work that these bigger agencies were giving these bigger companies. Um, So I saw that whole I filled it. So now every single day, our team bands together. Um, We like to say that we bring our clients, brands, mission, and vision to life through the power of visual storytelling. So we really come at it um, from the brand identity standpoint. Um, So most people would call that graphic design. I like to call it brand identity, branding experts. Um, We really bring that to life in a visual way through logo, colors, fonts, patterns, and really just give our clients the tool set they need to feel more confident in their branding. So how does, you know, so for like I, for myself, like I don't have a storefront, I'm, I'm a consultant. So I work with everybody else's brands and whatnot, but when it came to my own brand, I had a really hard time identifying as well as the, the podcast. And I, I, one of the girls who um, used to work for me in the past is graphics she did my MC design collaboration. She also did the retail horror um, branding. So she's been phenomenal, but she really had to kind of lead me through who, you know, I thought I was like, how do you work? And if somebody comes to you and like, we have no idea, like this is our store and it's, you know, we, we feel like we're kind of this or kind of that. Like, how do you, how do you get that out of them? Yeah, definitely. Um, So our process is in three phases. And the first phase is what we call the discovery phase. So that is really where we take a deep dive in the intentions of everyone's brand. And I think it's where that story piece really comes in. Um, We kind of have two things. The first is what we call our brand vibe. Um, So we do have a free quiz that I always tend to send people to. It's a really good starting point of just kind of the common descriptive words that people um, that we've worked with in the past and clients tell us that they are as a brand. Um, So that kind of starts 
to help them understand like who they are in terms of their vibe. Um, but kind of the secondary part of that is like the visual story. What is that emotion you're trying to sell? Like who is that audience you're trying to speak to and what is it you're trying to speak to them? Um, so really kind of getting down to the nitty gritty of like, why did you start your store? Like what is the impact you're trying to make in your community? And is your branding aligning with that? Really kind of doing a lot of soul searching as that first step in our process. Um, and where our team are experts and when we come in is we're able to visually translate that. So we take all those words and all those feelings and when we turn it into what the starting point is of a brand board and some initial sketches, um, usually right off the bat, that helps people be like, oh, actually I thought it was this, but now that I see it and like I've talked to you guys, I think I'm more this. And that first phase, we're really able to kind of, we like to say, be your branding Sherpas and like lead you <laughs> down the right path. Yeah, that's a good a good term for that because yeah. you really do you really do sometimes if you don't know what you want you really do need to kind of be led if like really soul searching like who am i yeah and that's one thing i really pride our agency on is we don't ever try to push trends or have like a distinct design style. Like I really do try to make sure that every single client that comes to us feels heard and that their brand is them. It's not just the colors that are trending at that time or the same look over and over again. So if you ever do look at our portfolio, you'll see like all our brands are very different. And then like, it's because we do that upfront step of making sure we really get to know our clients before kind of diving into the fun visual part that everyone wants to get to right away. <laughs> So after you you go through the 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 fact finding mission of who how how does the process go from there yeah, so that's when we move on to what we call our exploration phase. So that's where our team kind of pedals to the metal and our messy back end sketches of trying all of the concepts. Um, so our team will kind of start to put together the whole brand. Um, and one of the things that I had talked about at UPP and, you know, we were kind of talking about before this is a lot of people come to me and they initially ask for a logo. Um, that's just kind of what people know what to ask for. Um, obviously, that's part of our exploration phase is we do a logo. But in that phase, we really try to show you just how far your brand can go, because essentially it's going to be um, what you're going to be using in all your marketing and sales assets to show your brand to your community. Cool. Um, so, so in the brand presentation, we don't just be like, here's your logo, here's your colors. We actually start to mock up um, and show our clients things of where their brand can go in the future. Like, hey, look, if you had this brand, you could launch subscription boxes. You could do a whole new window claim, wow. you could do a, an ad campaign. And we really start to show them like, yes, you're going to get icons and patterns and colors and fonts and all that from us, but look what you can do with it. That's amazing. Um, so that yeah, so that is the phase where people tend to get really excited and they're like, oh, okay, now I'm starting to see the value that like this branding thing is going to bring to my business. Um, when I just had a question, of course, I'm, I'm 50 plus, so you tend to forget shit all the time. <laughs> but how many people do you have in your team? Because it sounds like, do you guys all collectively together work on the same thing or do you have separate projects or I love the idea yeah. that it sounds like there are multiple people yep. involved in this whole process. Yeah, so I have two full-time designers, two part-time designers, um, and then we have a couple of illustrators that are contractors. Um, we all pretty much touch every project. Um, there's always one lead designer on the project that is kind of running it forward, but that's like my favorite part about the back end of the exploration phase is how collaborative our team are working together. Um, we use Slack, which is like the best tool ever to be able to communicate quickly to one another and kind of just drop our ideas or, hey, um, I was on a walk and saw this. Luckily, my designers are everywhere. I have one in Portland, one in Miami, one in New York, and then that's I'm based great. in Michigan. Um, so it's really nice to kind of have all those perspectives come to the table, especially our one designer, New York, she's always finding really cool things. Um, oh, I bet. So yeah, we, it's really a team effort um, between our clients and then our team as well. So what is your, what is your style? Cause it seems like your clients are a little bit edgier, like you had talked about, which I love the story. And I'm going to have you share your storyboards that you went through and your presentation that you went through at UPP. Um, but I love the one where it was, it's a baby store and the colors were not like the pastel and baby, they were like brights they weren't primaries but they were these funky bright design savvy colors and you yeah. had said that the the owner had said you know the, that's perfect because the dad that they're looking at is tatted up sleeves with a mohawk and he's dad which is yep. that's that's a 
a market that I, that the majority I think of people are not branding for. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason they say there's riches and niches. And I think a lot of the time, um, a clients come to us kind of looking for permission to niche down. Um, so a lot of times we will have clients come to us that are in the phase where they're like, listen, I've been kind of just trying to target everyone with my product or my store and like who I am. And the reason I started my business is because X, Y, Z. So her example, um, you know, her husband used to be in a band. They are like really into music. They're really into like eighties pop culture. Um, and she decided to start this baby brand when she had her, um, son and they were always trying to find band tees for him to wear. And they just didn't really like what they were finding. So she started her own line because that's what her and her husband were into. And that was her story. And at first it was like, you know, I was just kind of trying to target, you know, all babies because it seemed like a big market but when she was able to really niche down and we were able to be like no let's lean into this like this is who you are at your core that's why you started your products like it's the story behind it and once we we're able to give her that brand one thing leads to another you start to attract your people and those people know other people who are in the same kind of market and it just kind of goes from there um so i i am a big proponent of when people come to us for branding to really stick to their guns and try to niche down on that vibe and not be so general because that is when the brands succeed. Tell me what your perfect client is and the perfect scenario, the perfect Ooh. job scope, because I know we all have them. Yeah. So usually I would say our clients that we see the most success with come to us at about the two year mark. Um, they're usually the ones who, you know, they have steady sales going. They've maybe kind of done their branding. Maybe they've done it in Canva or invested in a cheaper freelancer, but they're really looking to have the full package. Um, and a lot of the times they're looking to do that niche down or they're looking to pivot. Um, one client we just rebranded, Ripley and Rue, um, they're a dog retailer and they sell dog accessories as well. Um, she She's a really good example of probably like our ideal client. She had like a really cutesy brand. It was kind of just doing what everyone was doing in the pet space, um, came to us and she was like, listen, I'm I'm looking to target women who are never going to have kids and their dogs are their kids. And like, they swear <laughs> and like, they like are into that. And so I was like, okay, let's do it. Like let's rebrand and, and lean into that. And her brand is just phenomenal. Like she does such a good job. Um, so I think when clients have like a clear understanding of like, I know that this is important. I know it's an investment. Um, I know it's going to help my business grow if I take this seriously and I'm going to go on the right path and like really trust you guys and listen to you. That's when we see the best results from our clients. So you just, you just used a couple keywords, trust. Um, I know it, it's, I've realized with, cause half, half of my job is consulting and you, my old way, I learned this, the older you get, you learn a lot. And uh, one of the things, the light bulb moment was I was, I'm a people pleaser. So you never want to let someone down and I will take on clients and they are very adamant about how they want it, but yet what they're doing isn't working and they'll mm -hmm. keep like, well, we do it like this and we do it like this. And I finally, at some point what had to finally say, look, you're going to have to get really comfortable with being uncomfortable because what you are doing now is not working or I would not be here. So exactly. I'll take in consideration what you would like to do and what you have done. But honestly, like this is all about doing something different. Like, so how do you you know, when you yeah. do have clients that are like wanting to kind of manage the process, like how do you <laughs> handle that? Yeah. So a lot of times this is, um, luckily because design is such like a skill to have. I do have a lot of people put trust in us in the beginning because they're like, I know no matter how hard I try, I will never be able to do this thing that you guys do. Like I will never be able to illustrate like that or do a logo like that. So like I'm leaning on you guys as the experts. So we do already have some really great trust there with our clients. Um, but when we do have clients that come to us and they're like, no, listen, I want to use blue because they feel very strongly about it. And then we go and look and all their competitors are using blue. And we're like, that doesn't really make sense. That's when in the discovery phase, we kind of show them X, Y, and Z. And mm -hmm. from there, when they see that visual, it's like, this is what you're asking for. 
this is why we are suggesting not just because we're trying to push a color on you, but because all of your competitors in the space are using this. And you told us that you want to give off natural vibes and we would suggest using more of a green color and look at this side by side and tell us which one, if you were walking past the store, would you think is a natural brand? And then when we're able to kind of explain it like that, they're like, oh, you know what? You're right. Most of the time they say That's that. Good. <laughs> Yeah, it's oh, and and when they don't, what happens? <laughs> I always have yeah, <laughs> most uh, you know, there has been some times where I had to pick my hills to die on. So I'm like, you know what? If you really want blue and that's gonna move the project forward, we'll go with it. Um, but yeah, sometimes you got to pick your battles. <laughs> I like that the hill to die on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, why don't you? Well, actually, tell us a little bit about some of your team. Yeah, definitely. Um, so hold on like one I said, second. I'm gonna hold on one second. I just realized I haven't plugged in my computer from when I got back. Mm. We just got back from um, filming up north, and I literally like just unpacked all my stuff and put it on, <laughs> put it on the. Oh my um, goodness! Yeah, you cables. don't want your computer to die. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that and noticed. I was like, oh shit. Um. So Catherine, you're editing, please edit out just that little last bit. So um, I'm going to ask you again. So tell us a little bit about your, your team that, and, and like each of the people that are involved in it, like what they bring to the table and what their personalities are like. Yeah, definitely. So I have an amazing team of all women um, that we work Love with. That. Yeah. So we, I have two um, full-time designers, Zan and Paris. Um, Zan is our lead designer and illustrator extraordinaire. She is just absolutely talented, can pretty much illustrate any style that needs to be illustrated, which is wow. why our brands never look um, the same because we're able to, you know, come up with unique illustration styles or unique kind of look for each client. Um, so Zan's our lead designer and kind of our branding illustrator extraordinaire. Um, then we have Paris. She also helps with branding, um, but her background's in websites. So she does a lot of our website designs, um, kind of helping our clients take the brand that we just did and translate it into the digital space. Mm. Um, and then my two other designers are Lauren and Brooke. Lauren actually has an industrial design background. Um, so she helps a lot with our packaging design and actually um, like in-person design. So a lot of our retailers um, will then ask us to work hand in hand with their interior designers and translate the brand into their physical location. Um, so we do a lot of like signage, working with signage fabricators, any sort of packaging design, touch points, that sort of stuff. Lauren helps with that. And then Brooke is our newest grad. Um, she just graduated college um, and she's kind of just helping us on all fronts as we start to get busy here, um, trying to, you know, just plug in where she can. But um, she actually graduated from the exact same school I did. So I know she got a good education. And that's one of the things that, um, you know, I really pride myself on is our whole team all does have a degree in design. So none of us are self-taught. You know, we all went to art school. We all um, do this for a living and are professionals at it. It's like really well-rounded team. I mean, I love the fact that if you if you are opening a brand and you you are literally starting from ground zero, you guys can do so much for them. That's amazing. And, yeah. and so tell me about some of your clientele. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, the main way everyone works with us is through our signature branding program. So that is the branding part of things. Um, but like you said, we do have a well-rounded team. So a lot of our clients um, then continue to work with us through our design days. And it's essentially where our team becomes their in-house designers. Wow. Um, so we have a lot of retailers that we work with um, just because they tend to have the most. One of my favorite retailers is Chew. Um, they are a high-end pet boutique in Belgium, actually. Um, so we do have wow. international clients. They're one of the ones that... Um, did the whole thing with us. We did their branding, their website. We worked with an interior designer to completely revamp their store. Um, and they work with us on an ongoing basis. So we did all their signage, um, what their shopping bags look like. Um, whenever they launch a new product, we do all the graphics and ads and social media stuff for that. Um, wow. So they're, def they're definitely one of our, our favorite clients um, to being able to, you know, just actually see the brand come to life in this physical space. Yeah. Um, and I eventually want to take a trip out to Belgium to be able to go actually see the physical location. Um, they're, they're really cool. And I would definitely check out, um, another couple of clients of ours that I like to always share. Um, 
One is Hattie Darling. She is a luxury paper and stationery company. Um, when they came to our team, she was kind of just doing it as a side gig and really wanted to get serious about it. Um, so we were able to completely rebrand her, give her all new packaging design, um, which it's been about a year now since she's had the new brand. And she's gone from six wholesale accounts to 60 um, wow. because of that brand. Yeah. So will you make sure you send email Elisa and myself these brands? Um, so we'll yeah. we'll link them in the show notes so we can um, definitely I'm note for that. Um, so why don't you show everyone? Give us a little taste of that presentation you did at UPP because <laughs> of it's course, so good because it actually gives back the visual that I really want people to see why I think your your work is so good. Oh, thank you. So this actually right here is Hattie Darling um, that I just called out. So you can see this was like part of the branding and the new packaging design we did for her. Um, so just being able to, you know, really level that up really appealed to a lot of retailers, which I know, you know, everyone listening to here is retailers. If you think about it in the terms of even your own store and the products that you're putting on the shelves, like packaging and design and branding matters. So it should matter just as much for your store. I love that um, box, by the way, with the floral siding. I think that is the cutest. I, I think I love that whole product. Thank you. And then this is actually the clothing brand that you were talking about. Um, they're called Rocco B Collective. So this was the brand that we were able to redo for them. Um, like I said, we've worked with over a hundred brands um, from service providers, retailers, product. I would say retail and product are our two biggest um, that we've worked with in the past. You will see we have a lot of pet brands as well because we are saying. dog. We're, do <laughs> we're we're dog people, so we attract <laughs> a lot of pet brands, but we do work with everyone. Um, I know you had specifically kind of called out seeing some before and afters, so I think this is always where it's kind of helpful. Like you're saying, when clients come to us, maybe with some objections or not really understanding the brand, like even just being able to see it like this side by side, um, this was a health coach that we were able to rebrand. So to the left, she quickly did her, you know, logo in Canva. She had a couple of colors and fonts she was using. It wasn't yeah. super consistent. It was kind of a chopped up experience. I mean, it worked, but it didn't really wow their customers. So um, when they were able to go through our signature branding program, you know, we gave them a logo. Yes, but we gave them the overall look. Um, she really wanted like this upbeat, really friendly, like clean food look. So now you can see when someone sees her social media, goes on her website, downloads her workbooks. It's all now consistent and it's an experience that's memorable and really wows her customers. hundred percent. Yes. And I know you had called out, um, let me go through the Rockaby. So, um, like you were saying with them, they, they're a baby brand, but we wanted it to be edgy. So we knew that we wanted to pick all of their visuals with that in mind. Um, I think that's one thing a lot of people will kind of skip when they're first starting out with their brand. They'll be like, Oh, I'm going to use blue because I like it. But we really like to go back to like, what's that emotion you're trying to show? What's that story you're trying to tell in all your visuals helping you tell that story or are they hindering the story? Um, so for her, you know, it was whimsical, edgy, and bold. So we were able to really have those really bright colors um, and then yeah, work it in. So yes, cute. we um, created the icons and the patterns, which this is kind of the, the secret sauce, I would say, that we add at Doc's Design is um, we call these like the brand elements. So the patterns, the illustrations, the textures. And the example I always use is I show their website and their packaging design for Rockaby. Imagine if we took away the pattern and the illustrations here and it was just color font logo. I mean, it would look okay, but those other elements that we bring to the table really is what levels up the whole brand experience. I think um, as I'm talking to you right now, I think I need to talk to you about a project. So <laughs> I will. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> talk to you about that. But I'm seeing this now, and even for myself, like the wallpaper element and the fact that you have all these arms that are helping you that work within the scope of the, of not just the design job. I mean, I think that all of a sudden now my light bulb is going off. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is, so this is Hattie Darling that I was talking about. Um, so she, like I said, she went from six retailers to 60. So to the left, again, she had like a logo and one kind of pattern she was using. Um, so that's what her brand looked like to the left. And again, it was like getting the job done, but it wasn't really wowing or really communicating who she was trying to go after when it's we were able day. 
Yeah, when we were able to talk to her, she's originally from Alabama. She's like kind of part of the country club scene. She was like, I'm really trying to go after like that country club, like garden party type of woman who's like never leaving the house without her white puffy dress. And it was like, okay, <laughs> let's give you a brand that does that. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then I, I think these are kind of just some really good examples of just showing you the power of brand through social media, um, through physical locations. Um, everything to the left is our clients before we rebranded them and everything to the right is with the rebrand. So like I was just saying, um, even with this, like there's no logo on it, um, but this is just using colors, fonts, elements, and really being able to showcase who they were as a brand. They're a vintage furniture retailer. Um, and obviously this image to the right shows that a lot better than to the left and it's because yeah, I, do, do they see their old stuff and their new stuff and go oh my god I can't even believe I was yeah I this. actually I actually yeah. just got an email from a client yesterday and they're like apparently I can't live without you now and they were like now I'm looking at everything in my store every crappy sign I've ever made in Microsoft Word and like put up every like store bag that I have and I oh. want it all redone <laughs> okay we're gonna touch point for two seconds right now because you just talked about two things things that are my biggest peeve a million different fonts like there's a few people that I work with that um what actually they have brought in products that have the packaging has five different fonts on it which makes me insane and the one font I even for my own that I can't stand is that swirly crappy oh god I can't stand it and then the other part is like signs signs made like on your laptop or on your computer in Microsoft Word. And they are so, I, my background is anthropology. So I come out of the world of like these amazing handmade, special, just beautiful little signs that catch your eye. There's, there's something about them that's so special that, but there's something when people get on their laptop and they start printing out these fucked up, like yeah. <laughs> eight by 11. I'm like, oh my God. And, and I, yeah. all I want to do is tear them, but no one, I don't think people realize what message that's selling, telling people. So please touch on those two things for yeah, well, I kind of have a little bit of an example here, actually, from a client. Now, this is for packaging design, but uh, uh, the label could translate into signage. So to the left was her brand before, and she did exactly that. She went in Microsoft Word, made these labels herself. I think I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six different fonts just oh on this label, um, which like, I get it. Like you have to start somewhere. Um, but here is the brand that we were able to redo. Um, we gave her three brand fonts to work with. We always give all our clients three brand fonts, a headline, a body copy, and then an accent font that you can use sparingly for call outs or important text sort of thing. So you can just see how much more clean easier it is to digest the information, especially for your customers who are shopping in your store. Like I can't tell you how many times a sign has made or break a purchase for me because I'm like, I don't even yeah. understand what's going on here or, Ooh, that sounds cool. Like what's going on over there. Yeah. It's an opportunity to have a touch point with your clients to further enforce that brand. Yeah. And it's the, the cohesive, like I use the word cohesive a lot because it has to do with everything from your store floor to your merchandising, to your packaging and how cohesive the new packaging is. I mean, again, with the fonts, again, you could see why it makes it more cohesive. It's not like you're, what am I looking at? Yep. This client, um, they doubled their sales the year after we did the rebrand. <laughs> I can, so. I, that's <laughs> <not> surprising. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, I mean, just like bringing it down to that. So, you know, I kind of always like to ask people that question, like take a look at your brand right now and think about why you started your store. Think about why you started your brand. Like what was that impact? What was that story you're looking to make? And can you confidently say that your brand is helping with that? Or is it hindering that? Um, I think especially with the re retail and your brick and mortar, I like to use the metaphor of the storefront because I think a lot of people do understand the importance of that when they're a retailer. Mm -hmm. It's like if you have a worn sign and your windows are dusty and like the doors hanging off the hinges, like it's not a welcoming storefront that people want to go to versus like if you have this beautiful branded sign and window clings 
it, I mean, that's essentially the same thing with your brand. Like if someone goes on your social media or your website, which a lot of times, especially now, I'm sure as retailers know with COVID are the first touch points that people are going to find your store. And mm -hmm. if your Instagram is a hot mess, you don't even have a logo as your profile, your graphics are all over the place. And then they go on your website and it's different fonts and it's different colors. It's that same jarring experience as like seeing that crappy storefront. So like, that's where the brand comes into play. It's kind of help with that whole over all customer experience tell people because i know what it is and i know what a difference it makes in window displays but explain a window cling for those who don't know Oh yes. So the window cling, um, is like when you see like words or like a uh, graphic, like actually stuck onto the window. Um, so it's typically like vinyl. Um, I, I think like Starbucks, for example, they always do a really good job of like having like their pattern running along like the bottom half of their windows. Um, that's always like a really nice touch point. I think our retailers can do when they get their brand patterns. I have a lot of them make like window clings I it and stuff. Love. <laughs> I, I used to use window clings all the time. And I don't know when, well, I know exactly when I stopped using them. I was taking off. I forget. We, I think we did a bikini window and it was all kind of Willy Wonka. We made these huge oversized candies and the window well, cling just said, the window clings just said eye candy. And they were like teeny tiny bright fluorescent bikinis and taking off the window cling. I was using a straight edge paint scraper. <laughs> yeah. And I opened up my palm like on it oh, with it. I that's exactly now I think about why I don't use window cleans anymore. Yep. I actually had, we had an experience like that. Uh, when I was in school, we did like a big 3d, um, like display thing and we had to cut out all these things. And I got myself with one of those straight edges before too. So they it's never fun. No <laughs> joke. Um, yeah. And I actually, I actually, um, just remembered I have, um, examples for yes. sp specifically, uh, retailers to kind of show really quick. Um, so just to kind of show again, are you able to see that? Yeah, I, I love so this, that. This was Rocco B. They have a pop-up shop now. So just this is like what a window cling would be. Um, so just being able to see, I think signage is a big thing for sure for retailers, um, being able to kind of see that. Um, and then also like the touch points when people leave your store, like, do you have a cool bag that are like catching people's eyes? And they're like, Hey, where'd you get that? Like, you know, I want to sh shop there. Exactly. Um, or even like the, um, pricing tags you have on your, you know, merchandise, um, just all those little touch points like that, really being able to think about it. And then when you actually have a brand that, starts to get a following because when you do invest in your brand, like I said, for example, with the Ripley and Rue, or even with Chew, for example, they now have launched their whole own product line because so many people like love their brand and know yeah. what they stand for. And so now they were able to take their brand and like create their own line of shirts and their own line of dog collars. And it was just like another revenue stream for them. So even like the swag your employees wearing, um, or like products potentially that you could go into as a retailer as well. I love that. Where's yeah. Bloomfields? This is in Michigan. I didn't know Michigan is, um, cannabis is legal. Yep. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, Actually where I live in Ann Arbor is like one of the biggest capital sorts. So we have a lot of dispensaries we work with as clients awesome. to be able to help with that. Yeah. There's some of the coolest. And then do you have any more, any more examples? That was okay. it. That's what yeah. I got for you. <laughs> I, I love, I, I can't tell you enough, like how much I love the information that you're giving. And I think that having those slides was perfect because I think retailers were all visual and it's, you can say, I know I need this, but I think until you see something like that, the sandwich sign, the window clings, the bag, the tag, how all of it. And I think that is where everyone's light bulb's going to go off. Yeah. And I think a lot of people get overwhelmed too. And it's like, I, I understand you're in the day to day with your store and you're like, I got to get the sign out and I don't really want to think about it. So I'm going to quickly put it in word real quick and it's going to be out there that quickly starts to snowball. And if you look around your, your store right now and you're like, oh yeah, this is kind of a mess. It's like being <laughs> able to take that pause moment and be like, okay, this is something that like, I'm going to lean on the experts for. I'm going to get it done. I'm going to get it done. Right. Um, with all of our retailers, we always provide, um, with our branding program, uh, templates as well. So a lot of them will opt for signage templates instead of social media templates. Um, and it's like being able to actually have that and not have to think about it makes that task not so daunting where it's like, okay, my, my brand kit's all set up in Canva. I know my colors. I know my fonts. I know I have this pattern to play with. Do, 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 do. 
sign, good to go. And I know it's on brand and it kind of alleviates that task. I feel like for a lot of business owners, it does. And I kind of want you to back up a little bit because I think what happened in the pandemic, what became very clear was there are a lot of stores with owners, my age and older who have been in the game forever <clears throat> and have not leaned in on their younger team. They have not had a son or a daughter, somebody to lean into. They are not comfortable with, I mean, I'm the, I'm the first one to say I suck at tech. And it's because I like, we never worked on computers at Fred Siegel. We were on a freaking stupid ass, like little old cash register. Not that they weren't around, but they just, Fred just, that's what we use. So I missed an entire, like I missed years of being on computer. So I think a lot of what happened during the pandemic was everything shut down and all these retailers who are afraid of it or who are intimidated by it or are whatever it is, all of a sudden now had no social media presence, had no internet or had, didn't have a website. It, if they had yeah. a website, it wasn't working. And I think that I think that some of the, the, the speaking points today, like I want to go back and talk about um, when you give them these two tools, either, you know, it's signage package or what does that mean in the sense of what, if they even go back to like Canva, Alisa uses Canva. She's the one that does it. I've, I've tried to dabble in it. I'm not going to lie. It's like, it's not as intuitive and easy as they say. So when you hand somebody a, a package, tell them how Canva works and how, what you're giving them, how they're going to be able to put it into play on yeah, their Yeah, that- so we have kind of two options. We have clients that come to us and they feel a little bit more comfortable where they're like, I'm going to be able to implement the brand. Um, and then we have other clients, like you're saying, where they're like, you know, what? I don't even want to mess with it. I trust your team. And that's kind of where the design days come into play. So we have a lot of people, like I said, they continue to stay on with our team. Um, it's like a monthly package and every month we're helping them with ongoing things. So it's like our team completely takes care of it. We're just delivering you the final file with the exact print instructions and you don't have to do anything. Well, that's- um, so, I didn't even yeah. know that. That's a great option. Okay. Yeah. So a lot, a lot of our, um, I actually do have a couple of like older retailers where they're like, I don't even want to mess with it. So please you handle everything. Um, and then the kind of second option, like I said, we do use Canva. So Canva is, um, I like it cause it's a lower cost option than like making our clients buy the Adobe creative suite. So it's a accessible way to have some design software. It can be a little confusing. Um, but like I said, we set everything up in the back end for our clients. So we set up what's called their brand kit. So it's like, we put in their font, we put in their logo, they put in their colors. It's all there for them. All they got to do is click it. And then they have templates for us. And it's like, all they have to do is duplicate the template and use it. And we provide like how, how to videos with our clients. Um, I also maybe a little too available to our clients and always answering questions for them when it comes up. But, you know, people invest in this brand. I want them to be able to use it. I can't tell you how many times I've like DM my client. I'm like, eh, might have not done the social media post this way. So I quickly put one together for you. Here you go. You know, Aww. just because it's like the more that they're able to succeed with their brand, like the better it is for us as well, where it's like, look at these amazing things our clients are doing. That's amazing. I you, you, do all marketing and like branding companies do these services. They, I, I, for some reason, I feel like I have not heard of <laughs> of this extent of customer service and services that are, you guys give to your clients. Well, I think one of the great things about us is like, I don't claim to be an expert in anything I'm not. And I know at the end of the day that like our team is really good at branding and we're really good at design. So because of that, we're able to help our clients fully with those two things um, and really try to be as hands-on as possible when it comes to it. Luckily for us, design touches a lot of things, digital design, social media graphics, website design, uh, packaging design, product creation, you know? So for us, we definitely have more to work with there, Um, but it's like, that's our expertise and that's what we're good at. So we're able to focus on those two things and get it done fast with our clients. Cause this is not our first rodeo. Um, we fully support 12 clients right now, full time, um, wow. of those 12, six are retailers. So, you I know, I'm like, I know the things they're going to ask for. Like, it's always like the signage or the bag or the tissue paper, or the, the ad for the, this on sale. So it's like, we know what needs to get done. We have our vendors and we're able to really help and kind of just give them what they need, which I think is 
helpful for when you're a business owner and you're a solopreneur as well. And maybe you have a couple of team members to lean on, but you have this like ever growing list of things to do, like being able to offload all of those design things is I yeah. always hear all the time is helpful. <laughs> well, I think a lot of, a lot of us females, especially think we can do it all. And we yes. try to do it all. And, and part of it, I think, is some of it may be finance, but I can tell you that this would be quite possibly the best investment you yeah. can A, take well, I, stuff off your plate and B, it's creating a brand. Yeah, well, I my business co coach um, always talks about like the cost of inaction. And it's like, okay, if you're putting this off, putting this off, putting this off, like the example I was talking about, the signage. And then it's like two years down the road, you now have... 30 signs you have to redo and a website and a social media. And it's like, if you're able to start with this from the get-go, it's actually going to save you money in the long run and save you time, which as business owners, time is so valuable. I can't even tell you, even in my own business, when I've been able to invest in someone who's an expert, yeah, I could have saved a couple bucks and tried to learn it myself. But it's like, at the end of the day, I got to where I am a little bit faster because I was able to invest in this expert to help me out and know that the job was going to get done right. So I, a little personal thing, you're having a baby. I am. Yes. <laughs> there you do. I'm due in August. Now, how long are you going to take off to spend time? You, you work at home, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do work. Me and my husband both work at home. So you can, um, yeah. you can be at home and still have, but I mean, are, how much time are you going to take off, miss? Yeah. We actually just had this conversation with my team today. <laughs> We've been figuring it out. So my team was like, you better be taking some time off. So uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Enneagram personality test, um, but I'm an Enneagram three, which is like the workaholic overachiever type. So yep. I am always working. I think that. It's just like every entrepreneur's spirit. So my husband's like, you better be taking some time off. I think I'm going to take at least six weeks. I'm going to try to at least take six weeks. That's when my husband gets off for work as well. I no guarantees. I won't be peeking at emails here and there when the baby's sleeping, but I'm going to try to take a solid six weeks. Um, luckily, like I said, I have an amazing team that I lean on now and have been working really hard on our processes. Like I said, there it's, we have the same thing over and over again. They're pretty trying true. Um, I'm already kind of down to only working part-time now supporting my team. Um, so I, I don't see it being too hard of an adjustment, but this is my first kid. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> it's all going to change. <laughs> yep. Um, tell, I always ask everybody the last, the same last couple questions, not the same. I've changed up a little bit, but, um, you are obviously very busy and you are a workaholic and you yep. love <laughs> busy like all this. How do you, um, both find balance and inspiration. Yeah. Ooh, that's a really good question. I think some of my best work comes from when I'm able to take a step away from my work, like even being able to travel for UPP to Arizona. Um, when I travel is when I'm the most inspired because I'm in new towns and seeing cool new stores and new products. And I'm just in a new environment. And I know that that will make my business thrive and make our des uh, designs that much better. And I'll bring new and exciting ideas for a client. So I think in my workaholic brain, I'm able to frame it that way where I'm like, okay, I'm going to take this vacation obviously I need time away just for my mental health but like it also gives me this renewed sense of creativity because you sometimes can only stare at a computer screen so long and get creative you got to get out in the world to get inspired yeah. so that definitely helps balance it knowing that being able to leave like helps me come back and just be that much more creative for our clients and how do you and so the the two are tied together that's how you find balance as well yeah. And I mean, luckily, like I said, um, my, my husband works from home too. He's actually a web developer, um, software developer. He has a full-time job. They give him unlimited vacation time. I have no idea how he found this job. So, um, because Amazing. Of that, yeah, because of that, we do try to take at least one trip a month. Um, so good. he's really good about pulling me out of my office and being like, we're taking a trip. Come on. So good. It's nice to have that. <laughs> anthropology makes you take an inspiration day once a month for exactly why you just said it is about getting inspired and being away from your normal and going out and seeing other things that hopefully spur some type of inspiration. Oh, definitely. And I like, I mean, even when we're on vacation, he's always like, oh my gosh, I'm stopping in to cool stores and introducing myself. I'm like, hey, blah, blah, 
blah, dropping a business card, getting theirs. I mean, like it's <laughs> still it's, working. I, it. Yeah. I'm like, I just can't help it. I love connecting with people. So, but it's a good opportunity to like step away, but also at the same time, like you said, continue to be inspired and like meet new people. Uh, well, Kayla, tell everybody where they can find you. We'll have it in the show notes as well, but I want to make sure you mention it on this, where they can find you and your social media handles, et cetera. Yeah. So the best two places, um, would definitely be our Instagram. So it's docs, D O X dot design. Um, and that is actually also our website URL is docs, D O X dot design, not.com, not dot net, just D O X dot design. If you type in www dot, that will take you to our website. Um, but yeah, our Instagram is definitely the best play to check us out. That's where we're doing all the behind the scenes of, you know, in process brands we're working on. That's where we're sharing our clients wins, sharing brands that are currently being rolled out. Um, we are in the process of rolling out four right now that we should be sharing that we're really excited about. Um, so definitely it. check us out there. Gosh, I'm so grateful to have this year, this conversation with you, because I think that one, I think you're going to get a lot of calls, but two, I think it's <laughs> a conversation that's so important that retailers, literally, this is usually the last thing they have, at least small boutique retailers, the last thing they have time to think about. And I, yeah. I think you explained it perfectly and your examples, I think are where the light bulb is going to go off on a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. I actually would myself. say, I would say because that I like, obviously the pandemic was not a good thing that I would wish on anyone, but we did get like more and more retail clients because of that, because it was like, it was kind of, you couldn't ignore it anymore. It was like, yeah. oh yeah, I do need a website and like social media. And like, I need to actually have like a brand that people get yeah. excited about and want to share. And I think that forced a lot of these smaller boutique retailers to kind of look into their brand and be like, okay, I should probably start to take this a little bit more seriously now. <laughs> well, I had said it was like the universe's way of fast tracking retail now, because you know, there's a lot of us who have been in the industry forever. And it's like, you, the older you get, you cling on to shit you used to do and what worked. And I hear it all the time of like, this is the way we've always done it. And it's like, it was literally the universe's way of just like wiping out the old school and now bringing in all these like young, fresh, so many creatives and the, and they're changing how retail is being done. I mean, you're a perfect example of like how you're changing the way that the industry is moving. And I mean, it's so cool to see it from the outside, but I hope that, I hope that more people my age will stay open-minded and really look at this and think about it differently than how they have been doing it. Cause the world is changing and, and, you know, the, oh. this retail environment is changing very quickly and the universe literally just fast tracked a whole ton. Definitely. I completely agree. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate yeah, it. Course, I'm going to talk to you when we hang up after this. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. I look forward to hearing from everyone. Thank you.